from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Hello, and welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father John Berteo. The televising of this Mass is made possible with the contributions from two donors. The first, an anonymous donor from Mississauga, Ontario, in memory of her beloved companion for life, John Finnis, and in thanksgiving for blessings received. The second is Georgia Ciccone and family from Victoria, British Columbia, in loving memory of their husband, father, and nono, Salvatore Ciccone, who passed away four years ago today, and for his deceased family members, for the intentions of the living family members, and in thanksgiving for blessings received. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass that we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends in Christ from everywhere in the world, thank you for joining us in this Mass. And today, a transition day, the last day of Lent as we begin and enter to the Tritium of Holy Week. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this beautiful time in our lives, let us together ask forgiveness of our sins. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who will that your Son to submit to our, for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive us to the power, drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare my guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Who insult you? 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to, to Jesus and saying, where do you want us to make preparation for the Passover, to, to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with the, my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man goes as it is written to, of him but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who had betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Yim Shayim had remembered from yesterday's homily, we continue to reflect on the events of that day of the Last Supper. And so I offer you some points that you might want to consider in your own life as to maybe going back in memory through the Gospels, 
what was taking place. So then again, as we enter into Holy Week starting tomorrow and the last time you'll see us using these colors, we, repl- we prepare ourselves to enter more deeply into what has happened with Jesus at that time and what he did for love of us. You see, a number of commentaries have offered us reflections both on what took place during Holy Week as well as commentaries on what Jesus might have been thinking, thinking, knowing what was going to happen to him and who was going to betray him for a few pieces, 30, for for example, in fact, 30 pieces of silver. My reflections are taken from two sources, Laudete and my daily prayer book. Let's begin by asking the question, Why did Judas betray his master? Was he motivated by greed? Maybe, maybe disappointment with Jesus because he did not react quickly with anger as many people do then and even today. Or it may have also been that Judas never intended for his master to die. Maybe. Maybe he thought Jesus was moving too slow and not acting fast enough in setting up his messianic kingdom. And in brief, being impatient is something that many of us possibly suffer from as well. Are you patient no matter what is happening in your life? Perhaps Judas wanted to force Jesus' hand by convincing him to act, act quick and act with anger. The commentary continues, Judas' tragedy was his refusal to accept Jesus as he was, kind, patient, loving, a perfect model for each one of us. Do you then know people who are over, over greed, overpowered, and will do anything for out of greed, maybe whatever, power, money, prestige, whatever that might be, that they'll do just about anything to get ahead, sometimes even stepping on others. Let's think about what Judas said to Jesus, and rather to to the Jewish priests. And I quote, What will you give me if I give him over to you? (laughs) You see, Judas was willing to take money in exchange for handing over the word of God our Savior who came to redeem us in perfect humanity. By the way, did you know that the number of coins that uh, Judas was given was equivalent to the the number of days that Jesus spent preparing for his mission before he started going to the desert? See, at the age of 30, he was baptized and began to preach the gospel, that's when his mission began for three days, for 30, uh, th- three years. Jesus then must have been, uh, or rather Judas must have been on the edge as he sat at table with Jesus and the other apostles. He probably, probably was trying to make a conversation without seeming to be guilty, agitated, indifferent. Remember the question that Judas put to Jesus, especially when uh, Jesus stated that he would betray him. He says, surely not I, Rabbi, with a question. Jesus replied, you said so. This fundamental question could have been part of Judas trying to act casual and relax as if nothing was about to happen. (laughs) Jesus knows much better. Jesus then responds that it is Judas' own conscience that implicates him and not Jesus. A couple of questions for reflection then. To begin with, how is your conscience in relationship to someone else? Do you put on a false face and pretend everything is right and behind their back you say something negative? Have you tried to see others as well as God sees them? 
the God who loves them, the God who loves you in the same way. Why treat them different or dislike? Because you have a difference of, of opinion. Why judge them when you don't want to be judged yourself? Also, have you or have I looked for the good in others who were created by the same loving God? And again, loves you as much as he loves the other person? Or have I betrayed God in my pride, in my pursuit for earthly desires, in cheating, maybe not paying taxes, maybe trying to pay cash and not pay taxes? Really, is it worth it? Dear friends in Christ, let's stop here. Let's stop maybe to remember that Jesus is ready to forgive you and everyone else, no matter what. Get to confession. Set yourself free and live happy. God bless you. Let us pray then for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking forgiveness from us, and redemption from Jesus for their salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may make this holy week a time of penance, thanksgiving for all what Jesus did for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sponsors of this daily TV Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We conclude in offering our prayers to Jesus through Mary as together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Sorrows, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For with you are going to receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may you come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with you can receive the wine we offer you. Free to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, Lord, wash my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that, celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our redeemer and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in, the, in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May clearly, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and into willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, with spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we're there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracing unto peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's pause for a moment and think of someone we would like to be at peace with and try hard to have that peace of Christ sent to them. You too can live in peace. See you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter in my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ meet to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May your mercy, O God, cleanse the people that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways and make them capable of new, new holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Eucharist in the love and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.